Hey, how you doing? Welcome to the Marky Worthington Comedy Podcast. This is episode 13 with uh, Bradley Bishop and uh, Felix McCarthy, two of the three guys for the um, upcoming event at the Canberra Comedy Festival, two nights for school, which is on the 18th and 19th of March. Uh, 18th is already sold out, so in this episode we get into the dates. This was recorded just before the uh, first show sold out, but now there's a second show added. You'll see a uh, link in the description to the um, event page for that, so check that one out. Speaking of upcoming gigs this month, we've got White Rabbit Bar on Northbourne Avenue. Um, It's actually a good room. It's run by Bradley Bishop, who you'll hear in this episode. Uh, It's on the 11th of March, starting at 8 o'clock. Uh, then we've got the front open mic in Lynham uh, on the 13th of March, kicking off at 8pm. And then on the 17th of March, we've got the basement open mic. Um, that's Tuesday the 17th of March. That's the room that I run and also where this episode was recorded. So uh, check that one out and uh, make sure you uh, email me for a spot. It's MarkyWorthingtonComedy at gmail.com. So uh, if you need a spot on that one, email me or message me on that one. Um, and then finally wrapping up the month, we've got the Boardwalk Open Mic at 8 p.m. on the 25th of March. That's Wednesday the 25th. Head on out to that one. It was just the one-year anniversary for that venue, so going going ahead nice and strong. Head on out and check that one out. It's a really good room, run by Kai Fay, who's a friend of the show. We've had him on before. So uh, plenty of open mics there for people to check out around the place. And obviously with the Comedy Festival on this month, make sure you head on over to the uh, Comedy Festival website and uh, find out what's on then. Uh, plenty of comedy to choose from, so head on over there for uh, more information about which gigs you want to go to and uh, get your tickets. Thanks everyone for listening to all the shows so far. We've had some pretty interesting um, conversations and good guests. Uh, we had Benny Egmalese in the last episode. The second part for that episode will come out uh, in the next um, release. I needed to uh, release this one a little bit earlier because it has upcoming dates for the Comedy Festival and I'd prefer to plug those shows earlier. Uh, so yeah, if you're hanging out for the second episode of the Benny Egmalese um, show, that will be uh, the next one. But for now, uh, thanks for listening. Uh, Make sure you like, subscribe, and share the show. Uh, Helps keep everything moving, and uh, enjoy. This is episode 13. I'm joined here with the uh, two of the three components of the upcoming Canberra Comedy Festival show, School. We've got Bradley Bishop and Felix McCarthy. What up, bitches? Hey, Marky. Have, thanks for having me. Yeah, man. It's good to have you on the show. Um, I may as well get the uh, the school plug out of the way first up. Um, I mentioned that you've got a show coming up. What time's, what day and time's that on? Uh, we've got a show at the Civic Pub on the 18th of March at 7pm. Yep. Uh, there's not many tickets left at the moment. Uh, we've been told that we're pretty close to selling out. Uh, About two and a half left. <laughs> <laughs> and if we if we do sell that out then uh we might be getting another one on the 19th but i guess we'll find out mm-hmm. yeah cool man looks like it's um selling out pretty f- decent amount of time away from the show so you know there's plenty of time to sell more tickets after that first batch had to create a lot of fake accounts but we got it done it's all good <laughs> yeah. it's all good yeah, Felix's mum actually bought 35 of the tickets as well, so... I had to pay my mum for that, so it was hard. <laughs> <laughs> Selling it to her friends who she does a Tupperware party with every Thursday. Nice. That's actually been a pretty good response. We've got, um, yeah, like like Felix said, maybe like two and a half tickets left. Um, and was chatting to one of the guys that runs it, and he reckons that we, uh, if we sell those out in the next few days, that we'll be the first uh, of the kind of local guys in Canberra um, to sell out, which is pretty cool. Because um, we've really been rad. talking about wanting to do a video promotion and putting stuff up, and and literally it's just pretty much been word of mouth. It's been a few photos on Instagram and us just sending some messages out to some friends. So yeah, yeah. dude, that's that's really rad. It's good to see that um, this is so. This is your first comedy festival show, and and yours as well too, Felix. Yeah, mine too. I, yeah. I started mid last year, so yeah. I'm yeah, pretty I've, stoked myself. I opened yeah. for the three blind men last year. Yep, but I would not classify that as my own show. So. They yeah, hit me dude. up and they were just like, would you mind opening for our... I think they sold out as well. So yeah, they got offered they did, a second yeah. show. So I got to open their second show and um, we managed to get a few bums on seats for that as well. So it was um, as close to a 
comedy like show experience is what I could have gotten and you know a year later to come back and have our own show and uh, be in the position that we're in it's fucking it's exciting man I'm really looking forward to it I know there's going to be a lot of family and friends so I think it'll just be a really fun night for everyone to be honest yeah dude no that's that's right I, I know about the three blind man show because um I was at the I was opening for Bill Macon on the same night so I knew that like they sold out because um Chris like f- printed flyers for both shows, like one on the back of the other. Yeah, he like he was promoting the Bill show as well as theirs. Yeah, because it's just so rad when it comes to like getting flyers out there. Yeah, um, Chris and is then all over it. yeah, dude, and, and Bill's ended up selling out too, which is rad. Fuck yeah, yeah, I love Bill making. Yeah, he's, a, uh, he's got some absolutely fucking killer bits. Man, so good. It was like how some in his hour there was like good stories and like good quick jokes as well. It was rad because, like, I had people that I'd what four people that came along to watch just my opener, and then said that like, oh, he looks good as well. Like, we we're getting two for one basically. Um, and yeah, they were like, oh yeah, we we were stoked to see you do your opening bit, and then like Bill was rad as well <laughs> to be able to see the whole thing. But that was like four people out of the whole like sellout that were there just for me. Yeah. Yeah, man. Still good to get like any little bit of support. I and think like Jeff I said, was there as well. He, Jeffrey <laughs> yeah, dude. Good old Jeffrey. He ga- Jeffrey Charles gate crashed the last podcast. Me and Marky were supposed to do. He just rocked up unannounced. Two kids does that to you, man. Fuck gate it. crash <laughs> everything. This guy. You came, yeah. He came too early, which isn't you know. Yeah, that's how you get unli- kids. Yeah. Isn't unlike yeah, Jeffrey. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's his life situation. Right <laughs> yeah. There. Yeah. yeah, man. No, he he, he dropped in. That was good. It was like ten episodes since then. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's been, been a. Uh, You've been plugging along nicely, getting a few little guests here and there. So, how's it been going? Yeah, it's been good, man. Like, uh, you're at Wagga with me before. That's probably my first gig outside of Canberra, actual gig. Yeah. I have done a couple open mics out of Canberra. I was down in Melbourne. I haven't been to Sydney yet um, for open mics. I've went there with the intention on it, but it was just like already f- full or whatever. Um, but yeah, man, it's been sick. Like I've had a couple of couple of good good episodes of this, a couple of really good um, like mics and getting like some solid material I down. Think, I think the show at Wagga Wagga is fucking sick, and you got to get excited for that as well for when you end up doing it. Yeah, um, yeah, no, I reckon Felix would go good there too. I yeah. think I'd bring an element of culture to Wagga <laughs> that, they've, that they've never seen before. <laughs> it's funny because I've been asked, like I've been asked about it from a few different comedians in Canberra, and I just. I just told him, like, you got to come prepared. I think I've had some jokes that I've told here that have worked. Yeah. And then, like, when I went there, I was, like, I've told the joke and they, like, they gave me a little bit but not kind of the response that I was expecting. And after, I think, last or a few Fridays ago when we did that show, that was the – that's probably the best that I've performed in that room uh, where I felt like it was just consistent laughs throughout the – it was supposed to be five minutes. I think I walked off after doing eight, but um, <laughs> as long as you don't sit up there and eat a bag of dicks, then I don't think anybody You're notices good, how long. Yeah. Like I usually for. try and keep tight, but I don't have many stories. Whereas like yeah. your finishing bit was a story, which you kind of need to tell the whole thing to get the full the full roar of it. Yeah, I've um, in the previous times that I've been there, I have pulled the handbrake nice and early and got out at four four minutes thirty. Yeah. But then I walked off and I was like, fuck, man, like, you know, I missed a few taglines and I felt like I just rushed through the set and there's nothing worse when you feel like you just rushed. And I was just like, you know what, dude, if I've traveled three hours to perform here and if I go three minutes over, it's not going to be the end of the world for these guys. Yeah, and I yeah. know them now as well. So it's I feel like they'll be more cool comfortable. With it. Yeah. And you guys went back the same night too, eh? Yeah. Up and back with Taylor, the other guy that's in our, yeah, that dude. we all know, but for the listeners here, yeah, he's the third component of school. Um, How'd that uh, go? What time did you just get back? Fuck, man. So that like that was a funny. Time. I I got back at maybe like two o'clock in the morning because I had to drop him in Bungendore, and we were just chatty Cathy's on the way home. And I've got a fuel card for my car, and we drove past the Shell petrol station, and we're like, oh, that's fine. There'll be one on the way home. I get paid monthly as well, and <laughs> we're driving, and like the fucking red light comes on the petrol and we're like fuck 
And I was like, and we'd spent we'd spent the money that we got paid on KFC <laughs> on the way home because we were just fucking hungry and fat. <laughs> and we had like eleven dollars left. And uh, so we put eleven dollars in at like at Yas or Murren Bateman. <laughs> then I drove him to fucking Bungendore and then in my GPS I've just put like Shell petrol station said open. And it's told me that the one in Dixon was twenty four hours or Braddon, one of the one of the two. And I've driven there and as I've pulled up like all the lights and everything are off and like my car had just made it there. I was like, fuck. So I had to get out, call an Uber and catch an Uber home and then go pick my car up the <laughs> next day. <laughs> and it was like, dude, it was so bad because like fucking, it was lucky I had my fucking Mrs. Card details and my Uber. It was a stressful time, man. At two sure. in the morning, I was like, I just want to get home, can't I? was like, <laughs> why am I so broke, dude? I got to stop fucking spending my money irrationally on fucking booze and other shenanigans. Yeah, man. That, oh, that's funny. Like, I wouldn't have even known that that went down, though. <laughs> like, like as far as I know, you left. I'm just like, see you later. And then, like, this whole other thing unfolded. Dude, well, it's f- like, I like after that show, like, the first one that I did there, all the comedians hung out afterwards and we just got pissed. Yeah. Which was the best because yeah, then you get to, like, really meet the headliner, like, yeah. let loose with them. They can give you some good advice and tell you some funny stories and shit like that. And, you know... You find, kind of feel like you get a little bit more comfortable with them. So, you know, if if you do know that they're performing in Sydney or if they're from Melbourne or whatever, you could hit them up on social media and just be like, hey, I'm going to be here at some point. Can you give us a good, like, room that I can perform in or something like that? Yeah. Because they actually know you, you don't feel like such a random just hitting them up and being like, oh, hey, man, where can I perform in Sydney? What's a good room? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, yep, for me, this is really the Canberra Comedy Festival. It's, like, my first proper show. So from there, hopefully I'll be able to use that to, you know, spring onto other stuff and get myself onto other things. At least I'll have it as, like, a bit of credibility yeah. that I can at least tell one joke. Well, we'll see so how we go. like, you should take a bit of pride in the fact that you've been doing it for, what, under a year? Or a year? Have you been doing it? I started... So I started late June last year, 2019. Yeah, yeah dude. That was one of first... And, like, you already got it. a Canberra Comedy Festival show. Like, most people... Like, it took me fucking I, two I years I haven't, I haven't got on. a show of two years. Yeah, so, yeah. like... Yeah, well, I, I tried to do my best to piggyback off Brad and Taylor. But <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I think also my, my balls-to-the-wall humour has, has really got me there. No, I'm just joking. It's no, pretty, dude, like... It's pretty my mild. My missus loves, it's loves pretty, your It's pretty mild in Deloitte, honestly. But yeah, no. A few I, I times feel, she's seen you perform, so I feel good though. Like I mean, yeah, I, I started that. I did my first like proper set. I think right before I started a new job was going into the public service. So like you know, I pretty much already made myself a full scale joke. So you know, where do you, where do you <laughs> go from there? Being a pube of society. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. May as well be a pube on the microphone as well. Exactly. You can't go much further down. Relatable. From that. Yeah. Well, I've, yeah. We'll fucking have a chat to the guys that run the Riverina room and. Like, that's just fun, man. Like, there's 80 people there that are just there strictly for comedy. Yeah. And, the and like, sometimes, like I was saying before, like, you know, they don't give you everything, but sometimes they'll give you a few, like, little passes with some jokes. Like, they're there to laugh. So, like, if you come with A game, then generally you do well. Yeah, you're good. I think, yeah, mainly you're there to pull it out of them. Like, you know, you've got to pull the laughs out of people. You can't expect them to be way in the laugh you know yeah yeah exactly. is it something that you want to do like full time or is it just a hobby for you oh gee i mean i need to be able to you know leave my day job but like yeah i'd, I'd do it way more nah, full time than what i do you now gotta, you gotta be willing to leave the day job before you can get day job money true that exactly well like i after doing that show at wagga coming back to my day job like was just it's like, hey, bro, do you do you enjoy depression? Because, like, here it is, like, yeah, dealing dude. with fuckwits at work, and they're like, oh, mate, I didn't get my order in time, even though you told me it would be here within a week, and your delivery company, who you use externally, didn't deliver it. I'm like, bitch, this isn't my fucking problem, man. Like, yeah, dude, this man. is on you, cunts. That's, like, that's where you're them. just like, oh, I was a fucking rock star on Saturday. I don't need this shit. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it's like, dude, fuck, I performed real well when I yeah. bought KFC on the way you home. I don't understand. I my endorphins were going fucking night. through the roof, cunt. I ate for free on Friday night because of what I said. Yeah. <laughs> I told fucking mediocre dick jokes and talked about being a sexual disappointment, and I would much prefer to do that than fucking sit here for fucking eight hours a day and listen to you dumb cunts rag about stupid shit. 
Yeah, dude, but how much better is that? Like, when you finally get, some, like, paid from comedy, it's like, fuck, oh, yeah, this is, this is like, extra. Yeah, it's validating as well, like, because you fucking come and do open mics and we've all been to a room where we've done, we've performed in a room and it's literally been the comedians and you're just like, well, fuck, like, I'm going to tell these cunts the same shit that they, like, they know my fucking material. Yeah. They've seen me it. working on the last three, like, the last three open mics, they've <laughs> seen me working. Yeah. Well, what did you say? Oh, you got to got to do it. Man. Yeah, practice <laughs> practice aside, even if it's just those guys in the fucking room. Like, yeah, you know, I like I almost just enjoy just fucking around with them if that's the case, and just being like, you know. And sometimes did you actually get a new little bit out of, out of doing that. it? Like at our when we did when I did White Rabbit the other day <laughs> when the fucking raw was on, dude. Like there was literally fucking my two mates were in the fucking audience, mm. and then it was the comedians, and like I made a mistake of not coming out and doing fucking seven minutes like a good MC, and then just getting everybody up i just kind of just said like look guys they probably gave up halfway yeah. dipped into a bowl of chicken wings just yeah. handed <laughs> off the MCing job to someone I else like, i was like i'm too fat and lazy to get up and introduce the next person so just fucking your next get up there and do your fucking, fucking re- 10 minutes replace the drum gave everyone for a mic. T- gave everyone 10 minutes i was just like you know what fucking practice your you know comedy fest material and that that the funniest thing was man that was a room full of comedians that were performing at the Canberra Comedy Festival and majority of us just ate a bucket of dicks because <laughs> we all fucking know, like know <laughs> each other's materials. There was like there was a few little laughs, but like I don't know. I felt bad, man. I was like, fuck, maybe I could have just started this a lot better and built some momentum, but you never know who's gonna come. Oh, like you can invite problem. eighty people on Facebook, but you never know who's gonna actually fucking rock up. I've yeah. got one mate who I used to work with who he comes out to a few shows like every year like if it's a ticketed event he knows this he'll come out and that like fucking props to that cunt man i was like you're a fucking legend dude for spending your hard earned on some dumb cunt who used to fucking <laughs> work in a bar with you <laughs> so i fucking appreciate him brett mitchell I no it's what you need shout out <laughs> oh, fuck, thanks bro i appreciate it yep do you uh do you I know you've been doing it for a little while now, but do you still have regulars that used to watch you when you f- first started and then still come along now? I'm pretty lucky, man, because, like, a lot of my friends are fucking really supportive. So, if I, like, when I put a call out to them, uh, like, in this massive group chat that we're in, I was like, hey, guys, like, the Canberra Comedy Festival is literally the biggest thing that I've done with my career so far, if you could even call it a career. Um this show means the most to me it's i've wanted to do this for two years like i'd written this on a whiteboard as my two-year goal and i'm ticking that off like fuck yeah it'd pre- i'd appreciate it if you guys bought tickets and the response was just like just got mine and then it just started fucking the next one i've just got mine i've just and like yeah yeah so then like literally if like, like out of 20 people maybe like 15 and did it and th- one like you know the guys that couldn't make it were like i've got to go away for work that weekend or i've got yeah, something that something they're already committed legit, to. Yeah, so yeah. I'm like fucking lucky in that aspect. And I've actually made friends at every workplace that I have worked at that I still catch up with outside of. Yeah, yeah. So that and my cousins love it as well. So they fucking think it's awesome that I do comedy. So and I've got a pretty big family. So they all have bought tickets. And my, um, my sister's bought some friends up from the coast. They're going to watch it. My dad's actually going to come as well, which is going to be funny. So, Fuck yes. <laughs> Dad, be prepared. You're going to see me talk about a lot of drug material, but... Yeah, yeah I, think, dude. I think my mum's coming down as well, which is good. It's one easy forward to her and her, all her Tupperware party mates, and yeah. we've, got, we've got a big crowd. Boots, half yeah. our tickets sold. <laughs> Large generation cross-section right there, yeah. really. Dude, yeah. the most concerning thing was, like, I, like, for selfish reasons, I was really concerned and didn't want my... Um, I didn't want my parents to come and I didn't want my girlfriend's mum to come. Mm. I was just like, fuck it, anybody else can come but not these ones. And <laughs> I was just like, I just literally don't have any good material that would impress these guys. Like, it's like I've been dating her for two years but, like, I told her specifically, I was like, fucking don't let your mum come. Like, I want you to go and have a chat to her and tell her not to ask me if she can come. Like, at no point is it going to be cool. And... <laughs> Fucking we're sitting down there having a family dinner about two weeks ago and she's just like, so, Canberra Comedy Festival, is it cool if I come? And I'm just like, well, fuck, I can't say no, dude. <laughs> like, I'm going to be pretty rude. It's just like, no, and I'm not fucking washing the dishes and this fucking chicken tastes like shit, cunt. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, yeah, see, I'm just stressful. inviting everyone's mum, so he's dragging uphill, man, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's yeah. my main humour right there, you know. Fuck, yeah, what got you into comedy, man? Oh, look, I've always loved stand-up. Um, I've wanted to do it for ages. You know, I've always had a lot of friends who were like, hey, man, you should try doing stand-up, just because I talk a lot of shit and, you know, I make a lot of jokes mid-conversation and stuff like that. So it just felt right when I did it. You know, I got a good response. And I was like, well, if I got, I might just come regularly and practice and all that, you know, which is what's you know got me in this situation here, really. I went to school with Felix's brother. Um, yeah, happy, happy birthday, Oren, as well. Uh, yes, it's his, it birthday his birthday today, birthday. actually. Um, also. And yeah, like he's a just date he's a fucking cunt podcast. As well. no, yeah, I'm just <laughs> gonna plug my brother's birthday <laughs> right now. So everyone go Long out there and wish Oren yeah. McCarthy a happy yeah. birthday. Um, <laughs> He's a funny cunt as well, and I remember chatting to him, like, we had our high school reunion a few months back, and I was like, fuck, your brother Felix is a fucking random cunt, but he's funny as shit, and he's just like, yeah, man, he's always been a random cunt, <laughs> he's just like, he was always performing, like, around the house, and, like, when we'd go around to, like, family friends' house, like, I'm just trying to be cool and be normal, and fucking here's Felix just performing, so yeah, dude. I think it may have been, and this is from an outsider looking in, may have just been something that's always been a part of you. Yeah, a little bit of performance work. Oh yeah, I've always had a bit of a performance streak. I think um, I did, you know, like a bit of performing. Did art you do stuff. drama at school? Yeah, like I did some drama when I was in high school. Yeah. I did um, some Same. some kabuki stuff for when I was at A and U doing secondary college. What's like kabuki? Japanese. Uh, Japanese is like oh sorry, not Japanese. Japanese is a language. Yeah. No, nah, um, <laughs> kabuki is like a Jap- form of Japanese <laughs> theatre and stuff. Um, so like one one year I did like like uh, dressed up as a geisha and stuff like yeah. that and we did like a you know like funny kabuki comedy and stuff like that. A geisha. I thought he said a gay shark for a minute. No, gay shark. <laughs> I also dressed up as a gay shark. Yeah. Yeah, it's fucking baby shark's flamboyant uncle, gay shark. <laughs> Likes it in the blowhole. <laughs> I think that's anatomically how a gay dolphin would work. Or sharks have blowholes. I don't even I think, think it's that. A, I don't I, think, I think sharks even got, have. They've blow got holes. two dicks though. I learned that when I was nine. Oh really? Yeah. Look, if it's love, in case one gets bitten off. If, if it's love it shouldn't matter how, they, how they're doing it, <laughs> honestly dude that is like some next level fucking fuckery right like if you're in like two sharks are fighting each other so one bites the other one's dick off bro imagine imagine having two dicks and like fucking going out on a coke bender where you can only get half of it hard anyway then you've got two dicks that are two only half. like fucking what a quarter hard each and yeah. you're like come on <laughs> one of you cunts fucking fire yeah. up i need this Thinking about all the random boners that you had when you were fucking 15 and now when you go out on a bender and actually need a fucking functioning <laughs> boner and it abandons you, nothing's more tragic. <laughs> Imagine if it was in reverse, though. Like, when you were, like, older, you just couldn't stop getting boners. Like, it was the other way around, but when you were younger, you just couldn't get one. That'd be confusing. Imagine being 80 years old with dementia, just not knowing just why your dick's why hard. It's like some, remember your name. It's like some phallic Benjamin Button puberty right there, man. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> it's like some... Um, Impotent from the start, and then once you get old, you're just, like, very virile, and <laughs> you're always out, you know? You couldn't fuck because you've got fucking arthritis in your hips. During your youth... You can't remember your missus' name. She's during fucking your throwing out your clothes. Yeah, during your youth, you're very, uh, what, reliable? And you're very well organised And you've got a good schedule That's And then it. you just become untrustworthy In your later days and <laughs> 100% No one relies on you And you're just fucking around The whole time Everyone will hate you Once you're dead anyway it's Just Yeah, yeah And Im- like Old old men are seedy as is But like Imagine if they're getting Fucking old man Degenerate boners Like what you had yeah, When you were 15 And like You couldn't get up And like Solve the maths equation Because you were just fucking Just raging under the desk I'll, t- I'll tell you what Speaking of ho- horny old men, I won't I won't specify what job I work in, but something financial related. Anyway, there's like it's the ATO. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll stick with that. Um, but pretty much like there is a bit in one of the one of the funds where it's like literally it's literally like this is the specific provision if they happen to have like another side lady because it's so prevalent. Oh right? yeah yeah yeah. Like um, it's it's military related. Um, but like literally because so many of them out on postings would just have like another side woman and stuff side piece funds yeah it's literally ended up like in the thing because it's happened so frequently man and it's like yeah I want to say that's awesome I I, I wonder how many people didn't budget for it before they decided that they needed to budget for it (laughs) 
<laughs> that would have been a lot of people. I need an bank account for my side pussy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's commitment. I mean, that's another form of commitment. At least Welcome to the military. Yeah. I'm just going to have a side. Well, fucking just they get discounted side, rent. You may as well spend it on something. You don't have to pay for fucking dentist bills. Yeah. like I might join the military. Fuck it. <laughs> cheaper <laughs> home. Fuck me the comedian, Mate, they've, they've Cheaper home for your dick as well. Send me into Afghanistan. They've protected our borders from continuous threats from Tasmanians. Yeah, that's right. We're, that's we are safe. As a result, Yo, dude, I lived like in Tasmania for Tasmanians. like a few months when I was a kid, and um, I went to school down there, and I was in primary school, and the, the chicks outnumbered the dudes like two to one. Jesus. Yeah, it was weird, dude. And then, tell you what, once you went into um, high school, all the all the chicks that would like finish high school, like if you go to this area in Tassie, I'll drop it because, you know, we'll see if that changes tourism. Um, but yeah, it was in Hobart. And the bars in Hobart, like with the younger pubs, everyone's just so fucking awkward because the high school in that area is um, like um, all girls and all boys. Yeah. So they there's the, no coed schools uh, in that area. The oh. like the closest ones in the south of Hobart was just all um, split. Split. So like people that are local there go through high school split and then on the other side the guys are outnumbered by the girls but no one knows how to talk to each other yeah they're all too socially <laughs> it's awkward. just awkward you hear that like in perth they're supposed to be like the women outnumber the men but no one goes to perth like yeah, it's too far away for anyone they might to now <laughs> Tasman- <laughs> tasmanians practice some praying mantis shit and just the women fucking tear off the heads of the guys Yo, after dude, they fuck them freaky van Diemen's how shit how crazy right there. is that dude insects scare me if insects were real life like if they were like fucking if humans acted like that, it'd be fucked. Or up. If, if ants were just like f- fucking the size of predator, yeah, like those cunts would just fucking murder everyone. Ants you know, are the second most fucking civilized society, well, organized society, second to humans. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, they, they they'd have shit to. Together. There's so many. And like, like, they need to. A lot of it's based on pheromones. So and just, crazy. Yeah. And they like do anything for queen. I'm like the queen. I'm like you pussy whipped cunts. Like fucking. Sort it out, dude. Like, can't you realise you bitches are all being played by this one fucking queen bee? Welcome to the Commonwealth of yeah. Australia. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I'll man. No, oh, and also, like, I heard about this the other day and it made me fucking laugh. The, you ever seen the size of, like, a male redback? No. no. If you haven't seen a really tiny fucking redback, you haven't seen the male yet. Mm. Any redback spider you see is probably a female because the male is, like, Isn't he all tiny. black as well, the male? Uh, I, I don't know, but... Basically, the bit that I fucking found out is because you know how um, certain arachnids eat the male when they done fucking them. Yeah, Jesus, the, the like Tasmanians. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Back to that. Yeah. But the fucking the male redback, most of the time, will fuck the female and then just jump in her mouth. Like he'll just commit suicide. Dude. He knows that's how he's got it. And that's poor form from the redback because you've got eight arms. Just jerk off and just fucking live your best life, man. Like no, he's just like they they're just like all right. I, I did my job. That's like bees. Bees are sick hunts too. Like they they are the jihadists of the insect world, man. <laughs> They'll fucking. That's one stinger. Once that's gone, they're fucking dead. Yeah. They're like, fuck it, mate. They're a bunch of suicide. The I'm crashing though, this fucking plane. They should be killer bees or bumblebees. They should be suicide bees. What about I heard fucking our... You know our mate um, Joe? Joe, uh, Joey Rogan? Yeah. He um, he was telling this... Shout out to Joe. Thanks for listening, <laughs> man. He's got a podcast. If anyone hasn't listened to it, it's called The Joe Rogan Experience. Check it out. Yeah, man. Uh, Check it out. I, I did that on Ket. It was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's that about? about? Was it actually, maybe it wasn't him, but there was... Maybe it was another podcast, but regardless of that, the story goes there was they had a bunch of European bees to do like a stunt for this guy where he makes a bee beard, mm. and then they were nearby some African bees, and the African bees could hear the European bees buzzing, and then the queen bee's like, "Wait, fucking about 150 you cunts, go see what's going on nearby because I can hear some rumblings," and they cruised out, and then. Fucking African bees were like, "What's up, motherfuckers?" And then the European bees like, "Oh, sorry, man, we're just making a beard on this dude's face." <laughs> Stung this cunt a bunch of times, and then we're like, "We need to sort it out." And then flew up, and apparently, like, fucking just made a big bee cloud, and they had a conversation with one another. And then the African bees are like, "So let me get this straight: you guys aren't here to try take over and try fuck our fuck our queen?" And they're like, "Nah, dude, we're just hanging out with the white guy down there who we just stung in the face." 
And then the African bee's like, well, all good then, man. And then they cruised back to the hive. And then the fucking European ones came back down to, like, their fucking bee master. And apparently they've got a real intricate language that they can speak to one another. Oh. And they all congregated in the air and they're like, hey, if we're thrown down, let us know. And then the Europeans, like typical Europeans, just bitched it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, do nah, nah, we don't want any of that smoke. <laughs> no, Wait. no, we were, just, we were just fucking around, man. Yeah. Boy, how, how's this for an analogy, though? Certain ant societies literally enslave other ant species to get, like, their basic goods, like, their basic needs taken care of. So they you know? raid them. They literally, yeah, they'll raid the nests of other ants, like other ant species. So if it's just another species, I don't know if that counts as a species. And they'll take them, like, when they're young, right? And then they'll, like, enslave them, and then they'll do all the things that they need, like, for example, you know, like food and all that basic shit, you know, the stuff that, that they've literally, because they've enslaved for so long, that they don't know how to really efficiently do themselves now. Yeah, yeah. These are called first world ants. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm just joking. But literally, like, <laughs> literally that species of ants, like, they literally can't fucking fend to themselves and shit, like, because they've enslaved these others for so long, Dude. evolutionarily. They're fucking creepy. They're fucking useless, yeah. How they're all, like, your on fucking shit, little dude. ant iPhones, like, <laughs> oh, God, it's no Cheetos. The fuck? <laughs> like, they would literally fucking die if they don't have that, like, you know. <laughs> these, like, slave ants are like, nah, fuck it, we're going on strike. These guys I, w- I wonder screwed. if ants get addicted to junk food like humans. Like, if they... Because they just eat what's You've on the You've seen them in a fucking pantry? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, like, yeah, they get, like... Imagine if they found, like, a source of something that was sweet and they just kept going back to it as opposed to whatever the fuck they eat well, like that isn't sweet. Well, like, have you ever, like, opened your pantry or whatever that they've snuck into? And have you ever seen them, like, Cheeky going... Have you ever seen them going for your fucking carrots and lettuce? <laughs> fuck no. no they're yeah. going for all the bullshit. Straight yeah, for the cupcakes, for the honey yeah. and shit, the dogs. Yeah, they're going for all the bullshit. Speaking yeah. of dogs, I took my dog... And ants. I took my dog for a walk. Um, and I fling the ball and I walk up this hill and he got real tired and he just, like, laid down... And he was laying down like 20 metres in front of me And I didn't realise But he laid down on a bull ant's nest And (laughs) he he like got up And they were like all over him And he was like (laughs) He ran trying to get them off And he was like kicking his leg like this Trying to like shake the the ants off And he was doing it on both The dumb dog did it twice In like two days of walking I was like bro I don't know what I think it was like the shade Yeah yeah. Under the tree And he's like fuck This place is fucking the best and then twice he just got attacked by bull ants. And Fuck. now, like, he's learned his lesson now and he's real sceptical of that spot. But it's just, I don't know. The ant chat just made, made me think of my dog getting bitten by ants. Yeah, fair enough. Fair like, enough. just shout out to my dog, Russell. He also <laughs> listens every week. Is he a Jack Russell? Nah, he's a, um, he's a Kelpie cross red healer and he has some pit bull in him. And, like, we were just sick of going to the fucking dog park and everyone being like, he's so beautiful, what kind of dog is he? And then everyone giving us his 10 cents or 2 cents of what they thought he was. So my girl got a DNA test done from him and, yeah, came back, um, like, 25% uh, red healer, 25% kelpie, 25% um, pit bull. Mr. Worldwide. And then 25% unknown. And I was like, unknown? I was <laughs> like, you're fucking the scientist that charge cunts for this. I'm like, give me a fucking refund, dude. I like, don't even think it's a dog, yeah, mate, honestly. Uh, maybe it's a dingo. Like, I was just <laughs> like, fucking hell, man. I wanted my money back. But I've always wondered why it had a fucking eel tail, though. It freaked me the fuck yeah, out. Yeah, dude, it didn't make any sense. Slippery dog. And, like, sometimes, like, this little fucking octopus tentacle just comes out of his belly, but then he can <laughs> retract it. I don't know what it's weird. <laughs> <laughs> like he's the belly on, button. He's real life <laughs> animorphs that cunt, so <laughs> Fuck yeah, man. Wait, how oh, fresh man. are Dunlop Volley's boys, by the way? Yeah, brand spankers. Also Fuck throw it. back to animorphs. Fuck <laughs> yeah. Teenagers put in their hands on a glowing cube. Yeah. Suddenly they can foot now morph I'm and a shit. Jaguar. But can't one guy go into, like, some weird alien shit and then that just, like, throws out the whole schema because it's like, I can become a dog. I can become a deer. And he's just like, I just become a random alien. (laughs) And you're just like, that's not fucking fair, man. That ain't fair at all. You wouldn't want to be an intergalactical being. (laughs) Did you ever buy the Animorphs books? Yeah, I was about to say. You fucking open the thing, you know, and it's like, oh, it's the guy's face. He's looking normal. And then you open it and it's like, oh, it's transitioning (laughs) into an armadillo. Yeah. And you're like, oh, shit. Fucking Animorphs are transitioning before it was cool, man, so... (laughs) Dude, I I seen a um, <laughs> I see I seen a meme. And it was like um, the animal from like the human to the dog, and it was like um, when when your crush tells you that her boyfriend just broke up with her, uh, yeah. like because you just like you know those <laughs> snaky fucks that are like, oh like 
if you need a shoulder to cry on, like I'm, I'm here for you and shit. But really, they're just trying to like cut grass. Yeah, yeah. Those snakes that have been waiting patiently, and they're just like, I like her. I'm gonna wait by the wayside for three years. I'll get some casual puss on the side. But if she ever breaks up with her boyfriend, I'm the first one to be like, hey man, if you just want someone to talk to, <laughs> maybe just go out, just have fun, just a few drinks, get some dinner. Yeah, fuck those cunts. I'll man. get your mind off it, you know that shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You just need someone who can make you laugh. Isn't that like conventional those... dating? If I, if I miss something here? I'm dating my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I miss something here, this is what I do every time. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's pretty much it. I, I don't think it's cut, it's not cut and grass if you if they broke up. But still, it is kind of like if you're like being if you've been the friend the whole time, man. Oi, anyone that hasn't seen it, look up Big J Augustine on um, his instagram he's got like a clip from some crowd work he did yeah. mm. and he's got this bit about how um guy girls that are friends don't just like fall into being friends the girl makes the decision like if she was just like hey we should fuck he wouldn't be like oh no way bro skiff <laughs> <laughs> yeah we should just hang out no way homeboy we should just like nah man that would wreck our friendship yeah <laughs> yeah chicks always make the rule of uh, they always say that it's friend that you're the friend. Yeah, man. But, but like, like you got to let them make that decision. You know what I mean? I'd a bit similar, which was the like, but it was like the guy's perspective. Like if if like I've been I've been friends with my buddy for like ten years, but I would legitimately say like, oh no, that would wreck our friendship if we banged because he's like <laughs> not he's like the same sex. Oh, so yeah. if you like change, is the, he straight? Yeah, like yeah. so we're both straight, same sex. We're just like if he was just like, oh man, we should bang. I'd be like, oh nah, man, that would wreck our friendship. <laughs> I wouldn't be able to be friends with you anymore. Would you let him bang you? Nah. If you're both straight, you wouldn't really question your sexuality then. Like would, it's just two straight guys sad having and it off. If you to bang him, would you bang him? Sympathy bang? Yeah. No, Two man, straight guys I, just I comforting each other? Up. I reckon the best thing I would do <laughs> would help him get laid. Like, I would take him out. Because I'm not going to be fucking better for him than whatever the fuck he just banged before. You never know. So, I reckon... <laughs> no, I would prefer to, like, contract out the banging to someone else. Would you just go in there as, like, a suicide bomber and just, like... No, wingman, bro. Like, you just go in there, you're like... But you could do such a bad job at trying to pick a girl oh, up yeah, that yeah. he could then look like a smooth criminal. Yeah, I hate wingmanning for people. I don't, I don't even that's, understand that, that. That's a form of wingmanning, though. Yeah, my friend asked me to be a wingman for him one day, and I was like, dude, I don't get girls anyway. And then he's just like, yeah. But anyone in need of a wingman, or wingwoman, for that matter, it's just like... Where's your game? Yeah, yeah. dude, that's yeah. a I good just convinced point. Like, him to jerk off on the couch with me, and we had a heaps better night. It's weird. Oh, so oh, much money. I, I, I managed to do well, like, and I'm just a weird motherfucker. Sitting down. Yeah, just a casual couch wank. But dude, the worst thing was you have was to one lean those, back a bit. It's one of those fabric couches, and oh, I misjudged yeah. the size of my load, and yeah, stained his green couch. I felt a little bit bad, but he you forgave that me cush. in the end. So couch wanks right. with the boys. Yeah, you know, I was just like, we could go out or. We can get, if I can have a quick five-minute wristy, get some dominoes because they text us every day, and then we can just keep playing the fucking PlayStation. And dude, to be honest, Roll out. probably one of the best nights I've had in the last three years. You know those little like the little tweezer things on the stick that you pick up garbage with. Yep. Yeah. I just put like a glove on that when a mate was going through a rough time through a breakup and I just did that just one why a glove are you worried you're going to get it pregnant uh, oh, you it's just pick up rubbish just on the side of the road as well and it just yeah so I've got to keep that clean but also like <laughs> the glove is just adds a human touch to it yeah. and I'll just stand about two metres away and he's just getting a, a wristy from a really long armed woman man, sometimes I can hear my roommates watching porn and I just I just cheer them on and give them words of uh, moral support from outside the bedroom it's like yeah beat it like it owes you money you fucking heaps good at jerking off. <laughs> if you keep going, you'll make your best time. <laughs> you know that's like the sound bite for someone jerking off right now. So listen to this podcast. They love it. Yeah, man. Well, fucking thing. <laughs> thanks for being on the show. No um, worries. I hope you guys are enjoying your wank at home. Yeah, to our sensual voices. Happy to happy to close on that wholesome content there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's yeah. good. I don't think it's. I think that's a good good point to close on. So, um, yeah, f- <laughs> fucking thanks for being on the show, man. <laughs> Felix, this is your first one, so it's good to good to get you out here. Brad, this is your second show, so pretty Thank much you, you've. Uh, but yeah, you've been. We've been like around the scene since then too, so it's not like we only sort of catch up to do this. No, we see we see each other 
once a week at least. Yeah, dude. Uh, there's like, which is good. There's at least a once once a week mic. And you sometimes see me in your dreams, which is you know, yeah, a plus for you. I'm starting to see more and more of it. The more we see each other, the more dream content there is. Yeah, my bucket ass is hard to forget. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah, yeah, thick boy pride. <laughs> thick. What's the the dad board? Yeah, um, yeah, that's what my socks say. I'm the fucking I'm the dad board. This show, amongst other things, is going to spread body positivity. Yeah, dude. Not only for our benefit, but for the benefit of viewers as well. Fucking me. Got a lot Marky. of menopausal women. I'm trying to make feel good about themselves. Me so. and Marky are trying to be the world's first plus size male model. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Felix is fucking trim, man. Yeah, look, I I hit some kangaroos about a year and a half back. And I just couldn't be fucked getting a new car. Like it's a lot of you know, it's a lot of cost. I've always had one since I left school and shit. So I was just like, fuck it, such a no, such a cost. I'll just cycle around till I get sick of it. So apart from exis- other exercise, I cycle everywhere. I cycled here today. I'm like fucking, it's oh, too dude, easy. I just laugh at people who find it hard to lose weight. You know, just so I fucking cycle everywhere. He told me to <laughs> no cycle, excuse. and I thought he was talking about doing steroids. And I was like, I can't afford that. Yeah, but I'm on a cycle, bro. <laughs> Alternating. <laughs> Alternating Every six weeks That's why I keep punching people And biting off their heads <laughs> Literally The thing is How would you do it Without steroids Like imagine just Being at that elite Level of athlete Without doing Any sort of I know it's yeah. fucked You gotta I had to pass a drug test To get a job And I'm bogan from Fucking Tuggerong So if I can pass a drug test Fucking You can't tell me That multi-millionaires can't Yeah exactly No I don't know The secrets are pretty basic If you ate all bananas You'd probably lose A bit of weight <laughs> Yeah no, I'm fucking. I'm Don't on eat all bananas. I'm on right. the. Uh, I'm on the strictly fucking ultimate double whoppers. Shout out to Hunk Jacks. I tell you, yeah, I, I tell you what, I got no excuse. I, I live off shit. Like I consume so much shit. Yeah, you should. So be, you much should shit. be fat, except for your cal- calorie fucking speak deficit. So speak so much shit. He cycles everywhere. Fuck yeah. Cycles in the streets. Cycles in the sheets. <laughs> <laughs> street cycler. Street cycler. That's me. Re- That's me. Street boy cycler. Felix. Slide, slide into your DMs. Slide into your buffets. Cycle into the DMs. We need to get an air conditioner in this room. Yeah. I'm fucking, I feel like I'm losing weight just being next to this fucking sexy hot unit over here. It's just my permeating fucking sweat from cycling in here. I'm like a goddamn radiator. Is that an Irish tattoo? No, it's definitely not. It's actually the... Is uh, that a little Mandela? Well, no, it's like a, it's a lotus flower, but it's actually... That there is an old Indian symbol, which is the Dharma wheel, which is good because not a lot of people know it. So it's like not something they'll affiliate with that, really. Oh, I thought it was a sailor's... Sailor's steering. It's all wheel. about just being esh to the max and just living in the esh moment. Max, wait a minute, hold up, Cuzzy. Never, esh never max. pay back your debts, bro. Yeah, I got some little squiggly spirals in there. Doesn't mean anything. Dude, I got a lotus flower as well. We're so feminine in touch with our feelings. But I even got a George Orwell reference tat with the old 101, and there's an eye. I thought that was smart. I put an eye in the in the O. Oh, I thought that was a um. I thought that was a vagina. So no, no, nah, no, nah, it's not a vagina. I do, I do have one, regardless. But like, um. Yeah, really, no one, people who haven't read George Orwell, they don't fucking get it, so I'm just like, government control, man, government yeah. control, that's what I leave it on. We'll, uh, we'll inform the viewers about our mate George in the next riveting episode. Fuck yeah, yeah. thanks yeah. for tuning in, uh, and you guys have got um, socials you want to plug, you got uh, Instagram, Brad? Yeah, you can follow me on b.bishop comedy on Instagram, but if you do, bro, just... Make sure you send me something sexy in the DMs. Yeah, my my Instagram's Felix ate my cat with the numeral eight instead of A T E. Uh I haven't really posted enough for the comedy festival. I've just been mainly using word of mouth but lousy cunt. I know I'm a lousy cunt, honestly. <laughs> just posting pics of me at the beach and yeah, you know, fucking looking cute climbing rock walls. Looking, like, that'll suck about that. looking cute with small dogs. No, dude, hey, if you read the if you read if you read, you see, I plug it. Anyhow, I gotta do it. I gotta do my end. Fuck yeah, man. All right, well, thanks for being on the show, and we'll catch you next time. Cheers, Mikey. Much appreciated. Peace.